I had this idea that my animation would begin with a shot of clothes tumbling in a dryer, a lot, one of those in, industrial laundromat dryers. That'd be shot number one. Well, that's all fine and good, but how do you get clothes to tumble in a dryer in, in computer animation? So this is really just kind of a proof of concept to see if uh, I can do this, see if it's possible, see if I want to do it. Uh, but I really would like this shot because I would like the sound of the dryers going throughout the entire an animation. So what I'm doing is I'm putting together a pair of pants. I figured, okay, I'm going to test this out and see if it's going to work for me. So I decided to use a pair of jeans. So I did a quick, uh, <laughs> not real great modeling job of uh, a pair of jeans. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, texture them with some photo textures or f with some photos that I found on Go Google Images of jeans. I'm going to use both a color map and a, a bump map. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them, put these jeans inside a tumble dryer, spin it around, um, and use, try and use cloth dynamics to um, have the jeans spin around in the dryer. In other words, set up a collision uh, with um, the actual dryer housing and cloth dynamics with the jeans. So this is what I'm doing. Um, right now I'm going to UV map the jeans. Um, always an interesting challenge is where do you put the seams on this kind of thing. Um, but what I've decided to do ultimately was um, just UV map them like this and then because the jeans are um, I don't know have a lot of varied colors on them, the, the images th that I use, I'm going to then use uh, texture painting in Blender to kind of hide the seams. Um, here I'm trying different methods of mapping, tried projection mapping and some others just to see what I could get. But ultimately I go back to the good old-fashioned UV map with seams. And I've finally given up and here we go, here's the UV map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the wires as a target file out to Photoshop and then I'm going to use images from the web to create some jeans uh, textures. So here we go, outputting the wires. And off we go into Photoshop and bring the wires up. Gonna save it as COL for my color map. And I think that one's too small. That one had a belt. I think I'm going with this one here. Just got to clean it up a little bit. And once it's cleaned up, I'll take it and um, paste it onto my wires and then uh, cut and move the pants to fit the wires. Now I'll use various things like the erase brush and the clone tool and things like that to clean that up.
And now I'm back in uh, Blender, just adjusting the wires a little bit in Blender to see if I can get it all um, on the wires without having to do a lot more editing in, in, in Photoshop. So there's my jeans so far, at least the front part. The back needs a little more work because it's got those big old letters on the butt. Don't think they had those back in the 70s. At least I don't recall them. But, you know, I was so young then. <laughs> yeah, trying to hide my age here. Just using the distort tool. Um... And then here is where I just use the clone tool to get rid of the the letters. And then the erase brush to kind of blend these together. So I did a little more work on that, but let's jump ahead. And so I bring that back into f uh, Blender. have to kind of move the wires around again on the back. It doesn't need to be perfect, as I said. This is just kind of a proof of concept. But what I do want to do is get rid of the seams, that those ugly seams between the two, between the front and the back. And all I do here is just uh, using the texture painting tool is just uh, sample colors and just kind of randomly paint over that uh, seam so it doesn't it isn't quite so obvious. I mean these things will be tumbling in a dryer so I don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect but I just felt that it would draw attention to its, itself if I uh, left it the way it was. So there we go, we're just about done with the seams. I think I do the end seams as well. <coughs> so that's not quite as noticeable as it was before. So there's the jeans. Now what I'm going to do is create a bump map. So I'm just going to take the color map, save it as a new file, label it NOR for normal, or what some people call a bump map, what I call a bump map too. Um, and then I'm just going to use uh, various filters like the color and the curves to make it black and white. And voila, there's a bump map. And so apply that to the next texture layer. Make sure it's mapped to the normal layer. Now, here's my little dryer drum that's going to spin around. I've taken my jeans and I've scaled them down and then pulled out, um, pulled them out front and back just to kind of maintain the same volume. Once again, doesn't have to be perfect. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to set up. Um, cloth dynamics for uh, the jeans here and I'm gonna bake it and see how it goes on this particular pass the jeans started falling out of the dryer that's probably not a good idea and if you notice I don't know if you noticed but when if your object is uh, subsurfed which you probably should have it if you're gonna try and have it be any kind of a cloth. Um, the cloth dynamics modifier in the modifier st stack should probably be above <coughs> the subsurf modifier. The bake happens a lot quicker. <coughs> 
So now I'm just trying to position the jeans in place so they'll stay in the dryer and tumble in a fairly realistic way. So the, the, I'm just really trying to figure out the best uh, s settings, arrangements. Um, I tried leather here, I believe, to see how that worked. Um, it's a little bit too much. You can choose between things like cotton and silk, denim, leather. I think this is leather here. That was just too stiff. And it's just a lot of tweaking. I mean, just depends on how you want it to look and what you want it to do. And we're, and this is a part here where I'm really learning a lot as to how it can look and what I need to do to get it to look like clothes tumbling in a dryer. I think, oh, that may be leather there. That didn't work out very well. And at the very end here, I'll show you the render of kind of the final test. Um, here I'm setting up the camera, setting up the lights to try and get the light in the little dryer drum there so I can actually do do a test of it here and ultimately I think I want to have maybe two pairs of jeans in here a couple of t-shirts a couple pairs of tidy whities in there tumbling around maybe a few socks um, so the interesting thing too is going to have to be how well does collision work uh, between cloth objects. I haven't really tested that yet. Um, so here we are with the textures and everything. And here, here's where I'm beginning to think this might work. I mean you're going to have <coughs> some uh, <coughs> stretching and things, but this might work. So here's the renders. So I think maybe if I add a few other clothes, it might work. What do you think? <laughs>